Hey guys, guys. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Scholars Be What. It's Adelaide once again. I'm happy, happy to be back. And, and today we'll be talking about um, a fully funded scholarship opportunity in Europe. Almost all the disciplines are covered um, and it is fully funded in one of the top countries in Europe. I'm sure you want to find out. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, so the scholarship I'm talking about today is one of the biggest fund, scholarship funders in the world. I have shared videos, videos about this scholarship previously on this channel. I'm plugging the links up there above for you guys. And I have had scholars who have used those videos to their benefit and have successfully won scholarship on this channel as well. I've even brought them to this channel to come and share their experiences with you guys. Well, like, like I said, said let's, let's just get straight into the video. We're talking about the DAA scholarship in Germany. This is one of the biggest scholarships in Europe. When you mention the big name scholarships, you mention Rhodes, you mention DAA, you mention Rasmus Mondes, DAA always comes up. So let's talk about the scholarship. Um, this time around, what we're talking about is the EPOS, or also known as the Development Related Postgraduate Scholarship. Um, so for the scholarship, um, we are already in the 2023 year, um, academic application window. Um, so, like I said, there are so many programs that are funded. Um, you can find out from this link here. I'll be dropping the link in the video description like I always do. Um, here is the link um, for those who would like to check that out. So, if you come here, you have um, a list of programs that are funded, detailed list of programs for the year 2023-2024. It is updated every year. So if you had had the 2020-2023 um, brochure, it might be updated by now. So if you come here to the table of contents, you will find how you can select your program of choice. There are eligibility by courses, the program at a glance, and then the previous, for instance, if you are someone in economic, economic science, business administration, and political economics, economics, you can, can find, find scholarships such as MSc in International and Development Economics at, um, in Berlin. You can, you can also find MSc in Development Economics at Göttingen, investing in Göttingen, um, also at Leipzig, Leipzig Small Enterprise Administration and Training. Different categories of programs. Um, for, for those, if this is your like broad category, you follow like economic sciences or this or business administration or political economics. Um, for for those, those who are, in, there are many more, as you can see, there's even PhD as well that are funded. Um, for those who are in engineering, for instance, um, say, like this says, hydro science and engineering. If you come, if you scroll down, you can find details about this as well. What are resources, master of engineering, energy and environmental management in developing countries, and, and then, then the list goes on and on. Um, Regional and, Ob and Urban Planning has its own category. There are only three scholarships. My Urban Planning guys come and apply for, to this one. Urban Management, this is CU Berlin. I did go an admission to the school when I was looking for scholarships. I'll be sharing more details about that as I go into the video. Also, Spring, Regional and Development Planning and Management. This is TU Dortmund. Also, also, Master of Science in Integrated Urbanism and Sustainable Design. The, the funny thing is, this is the kind of scholarship I've sponsored when I was looking for scholarships as well as a, as a planner, right? So, these are scholarships you can check out. Just look for which one is your field, you will find it. And you can find detailed um, eligibility requirements in this brochure. You can find it here. Just scroll down, select a particular program and then find it. In, in terms, terms of like overall information about the scholarship, um, it is for PGD or postgraduate courses, and which would be MSc, PhD, um, for young professionals from developing countries. You should have internationally recognized masters and PhD degree. Like I said previously, I brought the a scholar who had won the scholarship onto this channel previously. In fact, fact, most very recently, about less than two months ago, about just a little over a month ago, um, it funds 
international development masters and PhD degree, tuition is for 12 to 24 months of masters, and 42 months for PhD. Um, it also supports selected programs with a variety of scholarships, including German language courses. If you're interested in taking a course in German, feel free to check. Um, for general requirements, you should either currently working for a public authority or a state or private company in a developing country. So basically, you should be doing some sort of work. If you, and then it says you should be engaged in planning, execution of directives and projects, with emphasis on development policies. This may sound um, ambiguous or really like high highfalutin, like the requirement is huge. No, um, you don't really have to be like you know at the top of your game uh, as far as this is concerned. In fact, for you to know this, if you look at the, the um, third bullet point here, it says. Is your academic degree should normally be not more than six years old. So, somebody who just who are just like six years after graduation, you won't be a manager or something. So, you are still an early career professional. So, um, you should have a bachelor's degree, um, you should have um, a far above average result, upper third, that is um, from I mean, it like 75% or 70% and above. Basically, what we know as second class upper is what you should have. As well, um, so for those who are having doing their NYSE currently, if you have a good grade on the graduate degree and you can put your application together, this is one scholarship you can definitely apply to. Um, for study courses in German, you would have a preparatory six months German language course in German. I should warn you that six months is not be enough for you to know what you need to know in German that will enable you to excel in your program. So you should have a good command of language before you even come to take German. Um, so, yeah, like I said, in fact, this is when you already know it's not possible to pass the required German language courses without any previous basic knowledge in German language, at least a B1 level. So, it's important to get that. Um, for courses in English, you are expected to have an IELTS Band 6 certificate or TOEFL with a minimum score of 550 paper based or 213 computer based or 80 internet based. I think this is pretty decent. I would even say it's a low score. Uh -huh. I think I had it around 14 when I, when I took to food then in 2018. Yeah. So um, 80 is very, very doable. Um, for some schools, I cannot really say right now. For those of you who come into the comment section to ask, if they are yeah, waving language test, test. I am not sure, sure about this. Um, maybe maybe something, something I can confirm from scholar and I will be able to answer you guys. But what I know is some schools will insist that you must write the language test. So if you have that, if you can go ahead and write the language test to give yourself a shot at it, I would advise that you do that. You should also provide proof of the current and past work situation. So you must submit proof of at least two years professional work experience. And then, then you state your current work situation at the time of application. So this is the proof, certificate of employment that includes the exact position and period of employment, a letter of reference from the employers, ideally something guaranteeing the employment of our completion of the course in general. So let me tell you how I did mine. You know, when I was done from school, I did my mandatory NYSC service, like right after I graduated in October went to say in December and I did my mandatory one year program NYS for one full year with the government, at the government in Amsterdam. While I was there, I was able to connect with um, you know bosses and people who had in a very generous and um, somebody who eventually became like a mentor to me and wrote lots of solid recommendation letters for me. Um, so during that process of connecting with him, he had um, a private planning firm of his I was working for him. I was not on a salary at that point in time. But then I was able to, you know, get a document from him stating that I was working for him and um, stating that he would be very happy to take me back on board when I am done with my program. So this is something that has to be included. So you don't have to be fully employed like me in some very top institution. Like we all know, so many might not even be willing to give you um, a letter, right, of 
proof of your current development and that they will take you on board when you are done. So that's that for your proof of current and past work situation. Um, then another very important thing is a statement of motivation. So you must submit a statement of motivation explaining why you are interested in attending a particular postgraduate course with reference to your current employment. The further should describe your development-related motivation and how they intend to make full use of your scholarship and education by taking on social responsibility later in their careers and from their home countries. So let's break this down. First, mention why you're interested in taking that particular course course with reference to your current employment. So what it's saying is that whatever course you are planning to take must have some sort of direct or indirect link with what you are currently doing as a job, whatever you are currently employed in, there must be a link between that and the course you want to take. That's what they want to see. Secondly, your motivational motivation should also describe, you know, what motivates you development-wise. When they say development-related motivation, meaning what can you take from that program? For instance, um, if I'm taking something in, in, in urbanism, Am I looking to you know, learn so much about like the urban program, urban planning program that will enable me to come and you know take that money back to my country? What are the direct correlations that exist between the situation in my country? And how can I use the knowledge of beginning in Germany to improve things back home in Nigeria? These are the necessary things that you need to include in your statement of motivation. Um, also, it says how you need to take, make full use of scholarship to take on social responsibility later on. You can easily prove this if you are already engaged in sort of, some sort of social responsibility or community or volunteering engagements previously or currently. This is why I always encourage guys on this channel. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Um, the video I dropped at two, two videos ago about the things you need to know as you are, for those who are like fresh in this scholarship game. Volunteering is very, very important. So, you need to show them that when you get this knowledge, you'll be able to take it back home to you know, help the course in your country. Um, so when applying for more than one postgraduate course, which is what I encourage you to do, apply for the maximum of three, um, you have to submit one motivation letter that is explaining why you are applying for the specific courses and why you chose that priority. So why did you choose this first one over the second one, over the third one? It is simple to do this. Go to the website, like I've pointed out to you. Look, go to the program website. Check in details. What are the course modules? What are the lecturers? Who are the lecturers that will be taking these course modules? What are peculiar things about them? When you mention specific things, it is easier for your for the admission committee, for the selection panel to find you worthy. Um, if you need more information about um, essays and how to improve your essays and SOP, I have plugged the link up there as well for you to check out. Um, yeah, the, the application forms, I'll be dropping the links to the application forms as well. You have to send it to the respective course directly. So each program, the requirements differ. Some works like you mail the document. So send it by post, like send it through the post office or maybe FedEx or DHL. Um, I would encourage you to send through FedEx or DHL because it's expensive, especially for those who are applying from Nigeria. Um, using the local post office works. Um, I haven't done this in like um, over a year. Um, but then when I when I did apply, I think mine it took um, less than a month. I think 16 days or so. Either 14 or 16, so between 14 and 16 days was all it took for it to arrive in Germany. So give it enough time, submit on time. And um, if, if you don't want to do this as well, you can also look out for those that are that their mode of submission zone is online only. That's another option you can take as far as this is concerned as well. Um, yeah, those are some of the things you need to know as far as this is concerned. Let me just run through the requirement document for the DA scholarship application. You need to have a personally signed DA application form with current date, a personally signed CV. We are encouraged to use the Europass CV. I didn't use the Europass when I submitted and I think of the admission right. So I encourage you just follow the instruction, use the Europass CV. A personally signed letter of motivation which reference to your current occupation. Like I have to explain earlier on all those details put in there and signed at the end. 
Um, and yeah, the letter of recommendation from the current employer, it should be letter headed and the official stamp and must be of current date. It should not be sealed every day. So it doesn't have to be sealed. So meaning it can come from you. Also, certificate of employment from the employer that prove a minimum of two years of relevant working experience. So that document should say this is where you've been working from up to this day. Which shows that you've been working for two years um, already. Um, proof of English language skills, English IELTS or TOEFL. Um, it says the institutional TOEFL is not accepted, meaning the one from like in individual schools is not accepted. Um, it comes to the academic degree, obviously, your academic translate, transcript. And for those that are going from China, you have to submit an APA certificate with your application documents. So that is the breakdown for the selection and procedure. Um, Send your complete application directly to the that to the specific program you're interested in. Um, this is the thing. So I know this is another question you might have. Since you want to apply to three programs, um, you're sending your complete application to one of them. So it should be in the other priority, it should be the first one, your first choice should be the one you're submitting to um, as well. Um, and that's it as far as this is concerned. And then yeah. You see, if you go into each of the programs, for instance, for Econom, for this MIDE, Master's Program in International and Development Economics, you can see in details um, the language requirements. You see, it's taught entirely in English. Then you can see the details, the entry requirements, you know, where you can contact for that information, send them an email if you are unclear about anything. So that's that as far as it's concerned. There's also another document I'll be plugging the link into the video description, it is this document that has the list of application deadlines. So, um, for instance, for this MIDE that I was talking about all along, the deadline was on the 1st of August 2022. It's closed already. Um, there are other ones, for instance, this MSC Development in Economics is still open. Um, it's, it's not open yet. It's going to be open from 1st 10th, that's the 1st of October, to um, 15th of November 2022. This one, the deadline is 1st of October 2022. So check the website, click this link as well, and check the website from the previous brochure that I showed you. I'll be sharing both brochures, the links to both brochures for you. So you come here, check, check the deadline. You will see details as far as this is concerned. This is it's a short document, look through it. I observe your program among those eligible programs, engineering, um, forestry, those somebody was asking something about medicine and public health. No, just medicine the other day, but this is something in medicine and public health. Um, for social sciences, education, law, um, media studies. This is one of those scholarships that sponsors people in law. This is all you need to know as far as the DA scholarship is concerned. I'm happy to have shared this with you. If you have questions, as always, leave them for me in the comment section. I'll be dropping all these things that I've mentioned in the video description video like, like I always do. If you have loved um, this content that I just shared with you, please make sure you hit the like button. Come on, share the video with your friends as well. And if you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, please smash that subscribe button. Till I see you guys on the next one, keep applying, keep pointing, and I await your good news with all this. Cheers, guys.